Hi, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about direct painting. So I have a still life in front of me that has white objects uh, that are sitting in a colorful, um, colorful color paper. And all of that paper is reflecting onto the objects, all the colors. And all that color is actually mixing directly onto the object. The orange is uh, uh, going onto the white object. The blue is going onto the uh, white object. And we also see um, the shadows. And all the shadows actually have a bit of each of the color mixing all in there. And I want us to do this painting with Alla Prima, or direct painting, uh, where we are working um, quickly, when, and we are basically um, painting, mixing our paint, painting directly onto the surface, and uh, kind of doing it in one shot. So Alla Prima uh, really means in one go. Um, so um, I want us to try to do that today with this piece. We're going to first start by creating a graphite drawing of, um, of the still life that we have. So uh, I want you to take your time and uh, develop a really nice graphite drawing of this piece prior to starting. And I would use a um, a semi-soft pencil, like an H pencil, to do this. So now that I've done my uh, underdrawing, I can start uh, painting directly onto um, this piece. And I have given myself some uh, Titan buff, some titanium white, uh, my two yellows, warm and cool, um, paints gray, my two blues and my two reds. So I have lots of uh, basically my entire palette so that I can mix the colors that I'm that I want. And the first thing that I'm noticing when I look at this um, is uh, really like maybe I can start with mixing the blue, the yellow, and the orange. And really this is a, 
a primary color scheme with uh, the blue, red, and uh, yellow, even though that red is more orange than red. So the first thing I want to do is I think I'm going to start with my, my yellow uh, bottom. And so I'm going to take a little bit of the cool yellow. And instead, I'm actually going to put some uh, titanium buff in there. And I'm going to mix that color first. And I'm looking for a yellow that's like a little bit of a, like a, almost like a ducky yellow, like a, a bright uh, yellow. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that color. And I didn't, I wanted to just use a little bit of the titanium buff because that color doesn't look so bright to me that I think that I need the, um, the titanium yet. So I'm mixing that color and uh, there's going to be a spot uh, where in this part of the composition, there's a little bit of uh, blue reflecting down. It's going to be a little bit more green. And then there's areas in here in the shadows where I have a little bit of this uh, red orange coming down and reflecting in here. Right now I'm going to mix that yellow color. And then, um, and now that I'm done, I'm going to just wipe off my uh, palette knife so it's nice and clean for next time on a paper towel. And I'm going to take a medium flat brush. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to load my brush and and start painting. And again, I'm thinking that that's the color that I see in this part of the uh, canvas and composition. I could probably even get a bigger, slightly bigger brush to do this. And I'm just going to go around the uh, like edges of my objects, you know, painting pretty uh, freely with a bunch of brush strokes, moving that paint around so that it's evenly distributed, and going in multiple directions. I can go both go vertical and horizontal. I can take a little bit more water, kind of water down my paint just a little bit on the canvas. And I often am thinking about the direction that the paint should go to emphasize the form of the objects. So right now I'm doing something that's flat. So big uh, horizontal and vertical strokes are going to flatten out a space or, or an area. And um, I also uh, see that there's a little bit of a diagonal that the entire form is sitting on. And so I can reinforce that with my, my brush strokes too. So again, this whole front, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how I do see changes in color in there as well. But this whole front area is basically one kind of yellow. I need to mix a little bit more of that color. I'm going to take a bunch of that color off of the palette knife before I wipe it so I don't waste it. Wipe that off on a paper towel. I'm going to keep painting. My color is just slightly different, just a little bit um, darker. I can correct, uh, or I can also incorporate that in. I kind of like having slightly different um, tones and shades into a composition that doesn't uh, that needs to have volume and dimension. So um, it's okay if the color isn't exact. It actually might help to create that sense of dimension in that form. I'm going to go in and kind of flatten out some of my brush strokes, go back through um, in here. So now when I look at the 
um, composition, the other thing that I'm noticing is that there are some highlights right here and right here onto the uh, onto the form. So I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and lighten a little bit of this color and put that right under these forms. Again, working directly on that wet paint that I just put down. Kind of creating that highlight. And maybe that highlight actually goes a little bit in here. And I see some of it in the back. Maybe I even see some of it at the edge of the shadow between the two objects, between the cylinder and the cube. So right in here, it kind of gets just a little bit lighter. If I look closely, I feel like the edge in front gets a little bit lighter too. Look in here. So I can work on lightening that up. And maybe a little bit here too. So the space in between has a little bit of um, that red orange reflected in it. And I think that if I take a little bit of this warm red and I mix it with my yellow and like make sure that the ratio is right so it doesn't overpower that yellow, I want just a little bit in there. Then I can start, I can just add just a little bit of that color in here. I think that there's also a little bit of that color here. Maybe a little bit deeper in, that, in there, maybe in here a little bit. I'm gonna wash my brush, wipe it, because I wanna go back to the yellow, which um, is the weaker of the two colors. So I'm going to, um, if I keep that orange in there, it'll overpower it. But now I can come in here and soften that uh, orange and include it in the shadow. And then take a little bit more of that yellow and same thing, soften this, these edges and blend that in. So that that shadow is dark, but it's also colorful. Um, let's see, I think I want a little more of that orange in the back. I'm sorry, I think I'm going to sneeze. Maybe. Maybe not. There's actually a darker shadow in here too, and I'll do that in a second, because I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, warm, cool blue, and I'm going to mix it so that I get a little bit of a yellow green. And I'm going to add that in here, because that's the shadow that I see in that yellow. And then I think that that same color shadow is actually in between these two forms. I may need to grab a smaller brush to do this. Somewhere in there. Wash my brush again, wipe it on my paper towel, get all that excess off, get some more of this yellow, and then mix that right onto my palette paper or my canvas. This is uh, not palette paper, this is canvas paper. And then same thing here. See, I feel like that shadow kind of continues back. It kind of gets interrupted in there. Okay, so now uh, I can do a couple things. I can start to go into the objects or I can deal with the other um, forms. And of course I can work on this for as long as I think is necessary. Honestly, I could probably work on it for much longer and kind of 
continue to play with those shadows, like layer them, mix them directly onto the canvas. Let's see. You know, I already have these colors kind of mix, mixed, so I'm going to go into uh, these two forms first. I'm going to grab a, a little bit more uh, Titan buff. that out. And I'm thinking about this form here, and what I see is that there's a lot of orange being reflected on this side. And this side, less so, there's definitely lots of blues in the shadow. There's a little bit of orange on the top of this, and then blue being reflected onto the cone. So I want to use my Titan buff, because this form's really not that bright. I'm going to use this orange that I've already mixed. And I'm going to go into this cube. I might want to wet my brush just a little bit. It feels a little dry. I want that paint to kind of really flow onto my canvas. It's okay if it's uh, like a, a thin layer at first. We'll thicken it here in a second by just adding more paint. Flat brushes are really great for geometric forms because they let you make a broad mark, but then they also allow you to make a thin mark or a line. And don't worry if some of your pencil marks are still showing through. We can keep layering so they go away and it'll be okay if they show a little bit. All right, let's see. I want to lighten up um, the front of this and make the back of it more orange. So let's see, I'm going to grab some more of this orange. I'm going to place it toward the back. Maybe in the front, just a little bit, right on this corner. And then I'm going to take a bunch of titanium buff and add that to the middle. Kind of lighten up that section. And then this very edge is lighter, right at the edge. It's going to lighten that up a little. It's funny, it's lighter, and then right next to it, it's more orange. So I'm going to mix a little more orange again, see if I can just darken that corner. So I'm going to continue and work on this part of the cube. Um, again, on that side, I see a lot more like yellow and I see a lot of blue. Um, so I'm going to stick with my titanium buff and I'll wash my rinse off my brush really quick. Uh, then I'm going to take and more of the titanium buff. Like these objects are white, but they're not pure white. Like they're not like a really, really bright white. And that's part of the reason why I'm not using my titanium white. It's always good to save the titanium white kind of for last B. I call it the secret weapon. Because if you just start with um, with really 
with a lighter, really bright white, it can make everything look chalky and pasty. Uh, so having a white that is warmer allows you to, um, to go brighter where you need it, like where you need highlights, where you need something to really kind of sparkle. It's okay to mix it with, with other colors, but really think about whether that's the color you need. Okay, so I started with this base color. I want to add some yellow in there. Uh, mostly in here, I just feel like it actually has a little bit of a yellow tone in this part of that white object. And in that shadow above it, I want to add some blues. And they're definitely more blue than the color that I had here. And they're also a little grayish. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of this and put just a tiny bit of uh, Peyton's gray in here. It's a blue gray and maybe a tiny bit of blue, just a very, very small amount of blue. And let's see. Oh yeah. So now I'm going to add that in, blend that into the already wet paint. to create that shadow of the cone. I can also think like, is there other places where this could be useful? Um, I feel like this bottom corner could actually use just a little bit of gray. Let's see, like around there. Maybe just a little bit in here too. And I think this corner also needs a little. Yeah. Okay. Maybe there's a little bit of yellow inside of the shadow. If you come in with a with a clean brush, you'll actually pull up a lot of the paint. Paint, so be careful doing that. But it can also help if you're trying to lift something back up. You might lift up all the paint that you just put down, though, so that might not be a wanted effect. And I actually see um, another shadow right on the bottom here. So I kind of tiny little bit of more Payne's Gray into this mixture that I, color mixture I have here. And I'm gonna try to add that in. Okay. All right, so now um, I'm gonna do the top of the cube. And what I see is very similar kind of color for that shadow, getting uh, next to the cone, getting brighter at the corner, and then more blue as a shadow that's being reflected onto that cone. So something like this. Try to make that brighter. It also helps sometimes to put down a paint, go to a slightly different section, let that paint dry just a tad onto the canvas, and then come back in and blend again. So I can't quite get that corner to be light yet, 
I'm going to actually wait a little bit. We'll let some of that paint dry and then go back in and add that highlight that I'm missing at the moment. I'm going to grab just a little bit of this orange and add it inside of the shadow. Because I totally see it there. I also see it on the top of this column, which is going to be really cool. Even if you're done with the section, you can always paint more. <laughs> Nothing stops you from doing that. Let's see if I can get that corner to be a little bit lighter. And otherwise, I'll move on to the uh, colon. And maybe I'll use some titanium buff and some um, or titanium white and um, titan buff. That's what I meant. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to just see if I can add these highlights right on the surface here that are going to describe that corner. And I'm just looking for other places that might need just a little bit more of a highlight. So I have painted the yellow foreground and the cube, which has a lot of yellow and blue um, reflections on it. It probably has more blue reflections on it. And as I mix my other colors, like this uh, red, orange, and the blue, I'll actually add more of those colors inside of my objects as well. Uh, but for the moment, I'm going to go to this red-ish wall uh, and mix that color. And to mix that color, um, I want to use some of the, the warm red. I'm actually going to scrape this up and, and uh, remix it. I was doing a, a demo with that color in class. And I'm going to take some uh, Titan Buff and mix that in there and just kind of lighten that color up a little bit. And then uh, add some more yellow into that color so that it's closer to the color that I see. I feel like that's pretty close. Again, I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to take the majority of the paint off my palette knife. I'm going to wipe off my uh, palette knife on a wet piece of paper so that it's clean and ready to use again. And I'm going to use this color to block in um, the red here. Yeah, my color could probably be a little bit warmer. I add a little bit more yellow in here.
you know, just while I'm at it, I'm going to grab some more red. And I'll grab some Titan buff here in a second. All right. Ah, that's better. So for this, I see um, that there's a shadow that's behind the cylinder. And so I'm going to leave that shadow space uh, blanked for a second. I'm going to use really horizontal marks while I'm painting because I want this wall to look flat and like it's behind the objects. While, while I'm painting the objects themselves, I'm going to make sure I follow their contours and describe their form with the direction of my paint. Um, using my flat brush and just working through. I almost need to put in one layer uh, first and let it get a little bit tacky and I can go back in and uh, add another layer that's gonna just cover a little bit um, better. So I'm just gonna finish painting the main color of this uh, red wall that I created out of construction paper. And then um, while I have that color, uh, well, actually, no, I'm going to go into the shadow first. So the first things that I want to think about are, um, uh, again, those shadows that, that I see here and here. And this shadow is a little bit complicated. There's an interior part of that shadow and then a, kind of a secondary shadow. So to make that color, again, I think I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray and just mix it into the uh, this orange red that I already have. And I'm going to come in next to this uh, cylinder and paint that. It's okay to mix my color right on the surface and let those two colors kind of blend into each other. I'll do some more of that, just one second. I'm gonna take some of the original color that I used and go into the shadow, like blending it, um, and just kind of softening that color a little bit more, letting it get dark close to the object and just a little bit lighter as it, it comes out. And then I want that same kind of color in this space. And so again, I'm going to use just a little bit of paint spray. And that shadow starts pretty high up in this corner and then it comes down. I also feel like I can reinforce and darken some of this a little bit. Again, there's kind of a shadow inside of a shadow in this space. So I can make the interior shadow a little bit darker. I'm going to use the original color and just blend that in. This one while it's still wet. 
kind of on a little, gets a little lighter right on this side too. I'm going to go in with that original color and just kind of put on one more layer now that it's just a little tacky. It should um, let me layer without lifting the original paint that I put on there. And that happens a lot where you can, you know, just if you put it on and if you work um, quickly wet on wet, uh, which is what we're doing, but if it's a little too quickly, it can just start to lift off that color that you put on originally. So um, just waiting, just even a little bit, and working on another part of the piece allows you to put on a second layer of paint. I'm going to leave that edge just a little bit further over. And then the other thing that I see is that um, there's some reflected light up here that feels like it's getting, um, that part of the uh, wall is getting a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use this red that I mixed, uh, mix it with some tight buff, and lighten up this part here. Even as it goes around the shadow, I feel like that area is just a little bit lighter. And same thing here next to this shadow. I just feel like it gets just a little bit lighter on that side. It's kind of like the space right next to the shadow actually feels lighter than the rest of the space. So I'm trying to create that illusion. So now I want to start working into this cone. And one thing that I'm really noticing is that there's a lot of red being reflected onto that cone on that side. And to make that red, I'm going to use the, uh, well, you know what? I think I'm going to grab some more Titan Buff first and actually paint in a lot of that um, cylinder and then add in highlights with that with that red rather than starting directly with it. So this next part, uh, it's going to be a time lapse. So um, I'm going to time lapse my painting of this cylinder. And you'll see me uh, add a lot of reds in it. Um, yellows are also going to be using Titan Buff to uh, create some of those shadows. Um, so you'll see me start to create the painting for that. 